I stopped writing image prompts, specifically nano banana prompts. I hand that job off to AI now. Most people overthink this. They add really convoluted words, they tweak the details, but still get average results. I built a system that skips all of that, and I give the AI five simple inputs, and it gives me back professional images without having to become a prompt engineer for image models. I'm sharing that exact system with you, plus a free tool that automates it for you. Let me show you how it's done. Okay, so let's start with the problem. Historically, in the past, when you prompt in models, you wanted to focus on keyword usage. So this was back in the day when Midjourney was a prominent model. It still is today, but back when it was super prominent. But now we have models that are heavy on reasoning and images, such as Google's new image model, Nano Banana Pro. And with that, you don't necessarily have to use all this jargon. Instead, you just have to give it rich context. Once it has that context, it can infer what's best for the image. But the issue with this is even with that, there's a specific way we want to talk to the model. And the system we're going to build today is going to basically make the need of knowing how to talk to the model in an effective way obsolete because we can outsource that to AI. And before we jump into that, I do want to show you that the inspiration for this video actually came from this blog post. There was a blog post published by Google a few days ago talking about top tips for prompting their new model for images. I read through this and it was really useful, but I realized that there was a lot in here that most people won't necessarily read themselves, but also they won't necessarily be able to apply on a recurring basis. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to consolidate and synthesize this blog post into a recurring system prompt that you can get high quality image prompts from. So I'm gonna show you how I did that, but we're also gonna talk through how to use it. Now with this system, all you have to do is act as a creative director. Your job is to tell the AI what you want. Its job is to figure out how to technically convey that to an image prompt or to an image model and provide back to you a high quality prompt that you can just copy and paste into Nano Banana Pro. And for our system, there are five key inputs we wanna give it. And the five key inputs are going to be the purpose of the image. So why are you creating this in the first place? The audience that the image is going to serve. Are there any subjects inside of it, product, human, et cetera? Are there any brand guidelines that should follow that you already have? And are there any reference images that you want to include, such as a product image, a person, or another inspiration from somewhere else? We'll talk about each in more detail. Quick pause and a rear the programming. This video is brought to you by me, as always. So two quick things. First off, below is a 30-day AI insight series. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox so how you can apply AI to your business and your work. The second thing is if you'd like to work with me, below are a series of offerings that I have to see if there's a good fit between the two of us. That being said, let's get back into the video. Now to the first one, purpose. What is the purpose of this image? Now, the reason we want to share this with the AI is it's going to dictate the type of aspect ratio you get back from the image. Basically, what's the shape of the image? Is it, is it elongated? Is it square? Is it tall? Whatever else. Uh, what are some of the styles that we'll use or conventions? These are all dictated based off the purpose. And some examples of purposes are I'm using this for an Instagram ad or a YouTube thumbnail or a pitch deck or maybe even a hero section for a landing page and a variety of other things. You need to provide the purpose of your image. Once we have the purpose, then we move on to the audience. Who is this image for? So is it for buyers for a luxury good? Is it for tech, exec tech executives that you're pitching for a product or a project? Um, is it for Gen Z consumers where you're doing some TikTok shop stuff or whatever else? You want to label the audience of the thing you're selling or trying to persuade with the image. After we got clear in the audience, then we want to move to the subject. So again, this is going to be what's in the image. So is it going to be a product you're showing off? Is it a person? Is it a character? Is it something else? You want to call out what the primary subject of the image is. After you've done this, you'll then go to the brand rules. So the brand rules are going to be if you have any existing guidelines that you care about, such as colors, fonts, style guidelines, you want to include that in your prompt in the beginning as one of the five inputs. So the AI takes that into consideration. You probably could even give an attachment if you already have a brand guideline or style guideline at your company. And then our fifth and final input is going to be a reference image. So this is optional. You may or may not need this, but most people usually use this with Nano Banana Pro specifically because it's so good at taking an existing reference image and inserting it and or changing it slightly to fit the scene. So some examples of this could be a photo of you inserting yourself into an image, or it could be a product that you're inserting into a scene, or it could be a rough sketch. I've seen a lot of people do sketches with pencil and pen or pencil pencil and pen, pencil and paper, and putting that into the image to then have it rendered via a 3D mold or something like that. Uh, you could also give a competitor's ad that you're inspired by that you want to create a slight variation of for your specific product. And we need to let the AI know that there's going to be a reference image. So the prompts it gives back, us to, back to us takes that into consideration so we can feed that image into Nano Banana Pro. And I'll show you all this stuff in more detail with examples. Now, these are our five specific inputs. Now we're going to go to the base prompt. This is where all the magic happens. So you give the five inputs. There is a magic prompt in the background doing a bunch of stuff. It spits out to you 
high quality prompts that you then feed into Nano Banana Pro. This is where all the magic happens. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I built this and also what's behind the scenes. So as I mentioned, this is how it works. You give the five inputs, the AI then does a bunch of thinking and research, and then it outputs five or actually three specific prompts, prompt A, B, and C. And each one in my specific prompt, which you can alter if you want, has a literal kind of styling, a creative styling and a premium styling based off the inputs provided. And the outputs we're gonna get back are going to be in a very specific type of structure. So this, what you're looking at is called JSON. Don't worry about the technicalities. We're using this because it tends to resonate more effectively with image models, specifically Nano Banana Pro. You're gonna get better outputs, better images if you use this type of structure. So what this is, like I said, is this is called JSON. And what you're looking at here is basically a label and a description, a label and a description, a label and a description, all within these funky looking brackets. The AI is going to do all of this for you. It's gonna give it back to you so you can easily just copy and paste it into Nano Banana Pro. Now what's behind the scenes? What is actually in this prompt? Well, I created this longer prompt and the secret here is, as I almost wrote none of this. The way I wrote this prompt is having AI write it for me. I'll show you the process first and then we'll walk through the prompt itself. So the process is very straightforward. So this here is a cloud conversation that I had. And all I wrote were, I gave it the five inputs. So the things that I thought were important and actually another secret behind the scenes here is these five inputs here, I distilled down from another cloud conversation. So I gave Claude access to this blog and I said, hey, what are the, the what's the 80-20 here? So if I'm somebody that's not technical that knows nothing about images, I want you to extract out the five things that I need to know when I give an AI these five inputs, it then gives back to me a high quality image prompt. That's all I did. It then gave me those five inputs. Then I added a few bits here at the top and then a few bits at the bottom and that's it. This is all the text that I wrote. And most of what I'm saying up here at up top is basically saying, hey, down here is a blog post that I just referenced to you earlier. So this is the blog post that I put here. I just copied and pasted it and put it down there. And I said, I want you to then synthesize this entire blog post into a system prompt for an AI to give back to me on a recurring basis, high quality prompts that I can then feed back into Nano Banana Pro to get high quality outputs of images. I then specified that I want the outputs to be in JSON format. I mentioned earlier why we're doing that. And then at the very end, I noted that if the user does not pro provide the five inputs that I gave you above, I want you to then ask them to provide them without doing any additional work. And that's everything, that's it. Then I just pasted in the prompt or actually the blog below, and then it did everything for me. So if I scroll down here at the very bottom of this, we'll see we have this really large prompt that it gave back to me that's extremely high quality and talks through all the things I've already shared with you. So I'll go back to our presentation to give you, I'm not gonna walk through the entire prompt, it's quite long. I'm just gonna call out the main components that I think are interesting. So like any good prompt structure, we have different segments. So we have different sections of the role definition, the steps it needs to follow for the inputs, et cetera. So at the very top, we're calling it an expert at prompting the specific model. We're giving it an understanding of your job is to take user's input, which is going to be five elements, and then turn that into a prompt. And then right below that, we start talking through the inputs that it's going to receive. So these are the inputs that it receives. Then we talk about how to research and how to think about research when it comes to figuring out how to write these prompts for Nano Banana Pro. We then state that we want back from it three prompts in these styles. So we have literal, creative, and premium. And then we have some other areas around prompting principles. So how do you prompt effectively for this model? And this is the distillation of the blog that I shared previously. So the AI distilled this down into the core components of how you prompt this model effectively. And it put this in that segment of the system prompt. And then at the very end, we have a final guard ensuring that the AI gets all five inputs before it does anything. And if it doesn't, he needs to ask questions to the user to get those from him. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you're going to get access to this prompt via a project. So you can always use it on a reoccurring basis. And also I'll make sure to share this presentation below so you can get access to the link and you can get access to this prompt as well. But to the point of the project, we wanna make this repeatable. So likely you're gonna create these images on a recurring basis. Probably you're gonna create a lot of product images for ads or creative for your campaigns for social media or whatever else. And we wanna have this prompt available to us on a recurring basis so we don't have to rewrite it or repaste it every time. The way we're gonna do that is through a GPT project. Most of you likely have access to ChatGPT. So what I want you to do is I want you to save this prompt into a project. So anytime you go to this project, all you have to do is answer those five questions. After you've answered the five questions, you're always going to get back high quality prompts that you can use on a recurring basis. And let me actually show you this project and I'll share it with you as well in the link below. So here we have the project here. So let me click this open here and we have the project. So here is the Nano Banana Pro D squared YouTube prompt project thing for GPT. And if I go to the three dots in the top right-hand corner, I go to edit instructions, you're gonna see the same exact prompt I just walked you through inside of the instruction section. So all you have to do, like I said, is add your five inputs here. 
And I already have an example here of the five inputs that I've dropped in. So this is a fictional demo of me running an e-commerce business for a high-end mug company that gives uh, that sells mugs. So I gave it some context at the top saying, this is what I do, this is my business, and this is what I sell. And then right below that, I gave it the additional context of the five inputs that it's going to need. So I'm first stating the purpose. So the purpose here is I want product images of my product for my e-commerce site and Facebook ads. I then state the audience. So I'm looking at working professionals that want to buy high-end mugs. Then the subject is going to be the ceramic mug that I've made that's matte black, and I want you to focus on that subject in the ads and the images. And then I have the brand requirements, which is warm tones, minimal styling, and premium feel. And then finally, I have a reference image. So I'm stating, yes, I do have a reference image, and I'm going to provide it to the AI. I want to make sure that this is included in the images. And that's all I gave it. And then it thinks for about a minute or so, and I'm using, importantly, I'm using ChatGPT 5.1 thinking with extended reasoning turned on. So you want the highest end model available to you. You know, by the time you watch this video, it might be GPT 5.5 or 5.2 or 6 or whatever, but you need to make sure you have the highest end model on so it thinks as long as possible and then produces high quality prompts back for you. So when I scroll through here, you can see we have three different code blocks, three segments of black boxes that are three different prompts. So we have our first one here. You can see it's signified by A at the top. So prompt version A. Below that, we have prompt version B. And below that, we have prompt version C. So all I have to do now is all I have to do is select copy code. So at the top of each one of these in the top right hand corner, it says copy code. If I select this, I've copied everything into my own uh, my clipboard so I can then paste it into Nano Banana Pro. So if I go into Nano Banana Pro, you can see I've pasted it here. So I have pasted in prompt version A, I have pasted in prompt version B and prompt version C. And I gave it an input of my ceramic mug. So you can see I have six different angles of the mug that I'm selling. And I'm putting that prompt in in addition to that reference image. So when I get back from these, I get the high quality images in different aspect ratios. So if I show you all of these really quick, you can see this is somewhat like kind of like a square shape. This is elongated landscape. And this one's a, uh, let me scroll to the bottom. This one's more vertical facing, probably like something you would scroll through on social media. Each of these are high quality images. You can see that it has the mug perfectly based off of the reference image. So if I go back to the reference image, so here's our image of our super fancy mug. And if we look at the image that we got back, you can see it's almost identical or probably is identical. And this is how exactly we're going to use this project on a recurring basis. So in this case, sure, we're talking about products for e-commerce, but you can apply this to anything. So take the idea that I'm sharing with you, the abstract process and apply it to your own situation. And let's say we got our image back and we're almost 100% satisfied, but there's a few minor things we want to change. This is what makes Nano Banana Pro different from all other image models. It's very good at making minor edits. So you don't necessarily have to re-roll the entire prompt. So what I'd recommend is making minor edits like this, talking as if you're a designer. Maybe you might not necessarily have the words to use as a designer would, but you'll give enough to the AI for it likely to infer what you're trying to do and make the change to meet your expectations. So you could say, make the background warmer, such as light. You could ask it to move text to the left. You could ask it to make the lighting more dramatic or a variety of other things. And the way you would do this is staying inside of Nano Banana Pro. In the past, what people would do is if they gave me an image that I wasn't happy with, I'd have to go back to ChatGPT to ask it to rewrite the entire prompt and then start a new chat and start over. That's not what we have to do here. We just have to make minor edits. So let's have it edit this image for us. I would actually like you to zoom out from the mug and also place this mug into a coffee shop from the same angle. So now, again, I'm no expert when it comes to design, but I know that this is likely going to suit the need that I have. Okay, so it gave us an image back that this background's not great. I would ask it to make the background, background more realistic, but this is still showing us the mug in a very similar position, just zoomed out. So the, the angles changed slightly, but it's the same exact mug zoomed out. And this is exactly the type of edit you can make with AI. Now, some of you may be asking, oh, hey, well, Dylan, there's a little watermark here at the image. So how do I get rid of the watermark? It's very straightforward. You just download the image and you can use probably 15 different tools to get rid of the watermark. I'll just show you one. And what I'll use is I'll often use Canva. So I've opened up Canva. And the reason I use Canva is it's something I already pay for and they already have a feature baked into this. It's very easy to use. So if I grab the item and I drop it into here, and what I want to do is I want to select edit. After I've selected edit, I'm going to go to magic eraser here. And I'm then going to just click over top of that watermark, click erase. What's going to happen, it's going to remove that specific watermark so it's no longer there. So if I go back out, you can see that the watermark has been perfectly removed. And it's almost as if it were never there. So it's very easy to remove those. I wouldn't worry about the watermark. And as a quick recap, some of the things to remember here. 
So when using this specific prompt and the way that we're using it, you want to have five inputs and that's it. Don't stress about being a prompt engineer when it comes to images or anything else. After that, let's outsource most of the prompting to AI when that comes to writing our image prompts for us. And that goes to a lot of other use cases outside of images too, but we're just talking about images for now. And then also we want to save that larger system prompt into a GPT project so we can use it on a recurring basis. So we get consistent high quality outputs, but not just us, but our team as well. We can share that project with them. And then finally, when it comes to editing images that are almost 100% there, we just need to make some minor edits. Make the edits inside of Nano Banana Pro. Don't re-roll the entire prompt unless it's absolutely necessary. But often you can just edit things inside of the model and it's going to do as you please. And that's it. So if you enjoyed this, please reshare it with your friends. And as a reminder, two things. First off, below is a 30-day AI insight series, completely free. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox how you can apply AI to your business and your work. The second thing is if you'd like to work with me, below are a series of offerings to see if there's a good fit between the two of us. Okay, so now you can make pro images fast. But where do those images go? Or at least some of them. They go to landing pages. I built a full system for those two. From research to live site, no code. Let me show you right here. Go ahead. Click that video. I'll see you next time, Internet.